Part two then says that the curve is translated by two units in the positive um, positive direction parallel to the x-axis. So this whole curve is going to move two to the right. So rather than having it where it is, everything's going to move two to the right. So we're going to have, rather than this point being zero, zero, we're going to have a point at two, zero. And we're also going to have a point at um, five, zero. So it's going to, that's terrible. Try again. Oh my goodness. Look, something like that. I apologize for that being such a terrible sketch. Um, so what will its equation be? Well, we know that we'll get the equation from the factorized form. And we want the factorized form to show a root or, um, yeah, a root at 2 naught. So that's going to be when we've got x minus 2 squared. And we're also now going to get a root at 5. So instead of that being um, 3, we're going to have a 5 instead. So that's the new equation. The other reason that's the new equation is because if you um, know how the graphs change when we do a translation parallel to the x-axis, um, each x value gets swapped with x minus 2. So if we look if we look at the original curve, which is x squared bracket 3 minus x, we're going to swap x for x minus 2. So every time I see an x, I'm going to write x minus 2 instead. But here, we've got 3 minus x minus 2. So that's why it becomes a 5 rather than a 1, because we're doing 3 minus x minus minus 2, which will be plus 2. So 3 minus x plus 2, which is obviously 5 minus x. So two ways that you can think of that question. You can think about the, the shape, the, the graph and its position and where it crosses the x-axis when you've finished, or you can think of doing the rearrangement. Both methods work absolutely fine.